Hi everyone. Today we're making keto bread. Yes, it's true. We're making bread today, and I'm talking about the bread that is fluffy, that's airy and soft. The bread that you're familiar with. So how does it work? So we're going to use an ingredient that some of you might not be too familiar with, and that is vital wheat gluten. So what is vital wheat gluten? Vital wheat gluten is essentially the gluten part of the flour. So it's pretty much pure protein without the starch. So it's quite commonly used in baking in general to improve the texture of the bread. So if you're using flour that's lower in protein and gluten, you normally use vital wheat gluten to boost the protein content. So that's what we're going to be using today to bake our bread. So you may ask, it's coming from wheat. So is it ketogenic? The answer is yes. So the carb content for the gluten flour is about eight carbs per hundred grams. So it's roughly the same as almond flour. So it's low carb, it's ketogenic, and it's vegan for sure. But it's not gluten free, as you might have noticed. It's got gluten in it. So if you have issues with gluten intolerance, this bread might not be for you. Okay, I just want to make it very clear. But if you're like me, who's not particularly gluten sensitive, but choose to eat gluten free most of the time because of all the benefits, then you can have this bread from time to time. So I like to think that being on keto is a long term thing. So it's all about the balance of the whole thing. You know, everything in moderation. So occasionally you can use this bread to break things up, or if you really miss bread sometimes. And、uh, just bring some variety to your diet, then you can eat this bread. But obviously, there are many benefits of eating gluten-free, so that's what I'll be doing most of the time. But occasionally, I'm happy to eat this bread. So let me show you how to make it, and you can decide whether it's for you. So let's start. The ingredients you need. So as I mentioned, we need some vital wheat gluten. So you can see it's kind of slightly yellow in color, but pretty much looks like. Regular flour. It's very very fine, and we're going to use it to create that bread texture. And then we're going to combine the wheat gluten with almond flour. So you can pretty much use any kind of almond flour, but not ground almonds, not almond meal. That's too coarse. Try to find the finest almond flour you can get. I'm using extra fine, but it doesn't have to be extra fine. It just needed to be as fine as possible. And then we're going to need some ground flax seeds. The ground flax seed is going to help the bread to stay soft and moist. And on top of that, we need some baking powder. And then we need some sweetener. So I'm using granulated stevia. You can use sweetener of your choice. And then we also need some yeast. So what I've got here is the fast action yeast, which is a kind of yeast you can just add directly into the flour without having to add sugar and water to proof. So that's what I'm going to use, and then we also need some fat in it. So I'm using olive oil, but you can use coconut oil or any kind of oil of your choice. And on top of this, we just need a little bit of salt and water, and this is all you need. So let's make the dough. So I've got a mixing bowl here. I think it's always a good idea to sift the flour first. So I'm going to just place a colander here. So the first thing I'm going to add in is my wheat gluten, and just give it a quick sift through. It just give the flour a bit more air, and also remove any sort of lumps or bits. That's too coarse. Okay, so that's my wheat gluten flour, and then we're going to do the same with almond flour. So here's my almond flour, and then I'm going to just pop that through the colander and just sip through it. Okay, so you can see there's some sort of bigger lumps here.、Uh, we're going to discard it, and then we're going to pop in our ground flaxseed. That goes in. So all the flours have gone in, and then we're going to add in baking powder. So we need about a tablespoon and a half, roughly. So one teaspoon here, and then half. That goes in. And then I'm going to add in about one tablespoon of the sweetener. I'm using stevia, the granulated stevia. And then we're going to add in a pinch of salt. So I'm using pretty coarse sea salt. Just a small pinch will do, like that. And then with the yeast, we need about two teaspoons of the yeast. So it's roughly about a sachet like this, about six grams. 
and we want to place it on one side of the bowl. We're going to separate it from the oil we're about to add in next. So this is roughly about two teaspoons. So two teaspoons of yeast here, and then we're going to add in the olive oil. So I'm going to pour it on the opposite side of the bowl. We want to separate the yeast from the fat, like that. So that's the oil that's gone in. And now we're going to add in the liquid. So this is where you want to play safe and add in a small amount at a time. So what we want is roughly just under a cup of warm water. So the temperature you want is kind of warm to touch, but not scorching. You don't want it too hot. So I'm going to use the spatula first and then switch to my hand. So small amount at a time. Let's just start mixing. And then add a bit more water as you go. So the amount roughly from my experience is under a cup, but don't take my word for it. The quantity or the type of flour you use may vary the requirements of the liquid. So you want to judge it for yourself. Okay, I'm going to switch my hands. Okay. And just keep adding water as you go and keep mixing with your fingers. So what we're trying to achieve is dough that is sticky to touch and moist to touch, but not crumbly. Okay, I think we're doing well here. So you can see the texture of the dough. It's quite moist and sticky to touch, but it's binding together as one. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. And now we're going to start kneading it. Now I'm going to transfer my dough onto my mat here. If you have a mixer, you can use mixer to knead your dough, but I'm doing by hands today. The way you knead your dough is pretty much the same way you would knead your normal bread dough. But this dough is firmer and more elastic, so you just need to put a bit more elbow grease when you're kneading it. But the method is pretty much the same. So you kind of roll it towards yourself and push forward, and then you turn it around 45 degree and then roll it back again and then push forward and keep doing it. So you probably want to knead it for a good 5-10 minutes. So what you want is to create that elasticity. But what you don't want to do is over kneading it. Because if you over knead it, the texture is going to be rubbery. So what you want to do is to get the gluten to do its job, but not overdoing it. Okay, I think we're pretty close. I think the dough is ready. So you can see the surface is starting to have that elasticity. Now this is not regular flour, so it's not gonna be super smooth. So this is perfect for us. So what you want to do is start to fold the edges downwards. So kind of push it down to the bottom to gather it together. This will create a smooth surface for your bread, but also to push out any air pockets. And then just gather the edges at the bottom. This dough is not as pliable as regular bread dough. So you need to kind of try to pinch it together and then gather it into a nice ball shape. Okay. What I'm going to do here is to take, um, I happen to have a bread basket and it's lined with a layer of cloth. This will prevent the dough from sticking to the bottom. And I'm going to just place my dough in there. And on top of it, I'm going to cover it with a layer of moist tea towel. So just run the tea towel under water and then just wring it dry and then just cover it on top. And we're going to leave it to proof. Okay, so we're going to leave the dough to proof in a warm spot in the kitchen for about an hour or when it's double in size. Okay, so after an hour, this is what you get. Look at that. So it's nice and airy and uh, we're going to transfer it onto a baking tray. So I've got my baking tray here and it's lined with a layer of baking sheet. So I just put a bit of oil underneath to make it stick. And on top of baking tray, we're going to grease it slightly. I'm going to just use a few drops of olive oil to grease the surface. And then we're going to transfer a gorgeous dough onto the baking tray. So I'm going to just lift it with the towel. 
It's so satisfying holding this doll. It's like a warm little little baby. Okay, so let me just lift the towel over. It doesn't stick too badly. And then I'm going to place my bread on top of the baking tray, like that. And just shape it a little bit. So from here, I'm going to coat the surface of the bread with some olive oil. So you can use a brush, but I can't find my brush. So I'm going to just use my hand and just rub it with some oil. Again, you can use coconut oil if you wish. And just cover it nicely. And then we're going to use a sharp knife to create a couple of slits on top. I mean, this is a nice pattern to look at, but also help the bread to cook evenly. So just take a knife and then just bravely give it a slash. So again, this is a firmer dough, so you might need to run the knife through a couple of times. So that should do it. So there you go, here's our dough. And now I'm going to preheat my oven. Okay, so the bread is ready to go into the oven. So I'm going to preheat my oven to 180 degrees, and then I'm going to leave my dough to prove further in the meantime. And then I'm going to bake it for about 30 to 35 minutes till it's golden brown. So there you go. Here's our bread. Look at this. It's absolutely beautiful. So the bottom is nicely browned and it feels crusty on the outside, but soft in the inside. So, so let's take a slice. So there you go, here's our bread. And I'm going to take a slice and uh, to show you what it's like. Okay, I've transferred the bread onto my chopping board. I'm going to take a sharp bread knife. I'm going to just slice it to show you what it's like inside. It's really crusty on the outside. Can you see that? It's really, it's got really lovely texture. Still piping hot and it's soft and it's airy. So I'm going to smear it with my favorite peanut butter. I apologize in advance because this is really decadent. It's so nice to cut. Look at that. It's really supple. I need to just break a piece off here. And then take some of this gorgeous peanut butter and then smear it on top of it. So there you go, here's my keto homemade bread and smeared with peanut butter, a chunky peanut butter. I just have to eat it. Mmm. 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 The peanut butter is sticking to the roof of my mouth. But the bread is really moist and soft and it's just wonderful. So this bread is really good as toasties as well. So you can use the toasters that you haven't used for a little while and you can make sandwiches, do whatever you want with it. And this is just so nice. You see, that's so soft and moist. Mmm. So there you go. Here's our keto bread. So with this bread, you can also make it into um, some sort of loaf shape. So you can slice them more easily, but I like them round. Um, that's just my preference. But I think you can easily get 10 slices out of it, maybe more, depends on how thick you cut them. So in terms of carb counts, the entire loaf, with my calculation, with the ingredients I use, it's about 24 carbs for the entire loaf. So if you divide it in 10 slices, it's roughly about two and a half carbs um, per slice. So for me, that's kind of way within my comfort zone. So two slices for a sandwich, it's about five carbs. So in terms of carb count, I think, you know, it's, it's pretty good. But as I said, it's not gluten free. So even if you're not gluten intolerant, um, I would always say it's a good idea to eat gluten-free as much as possible. But life is about enjoyment and it's about balance. So personally, I'm happy to eat this bread from time to time and you need to make that judgment for yourself. So everything is in moderation. So how do you store this bread? So you can treat it pretty much like normal bread. Um, if you're going to consume it within the next couple of days, then keep it somewhere in the room temperature, uh, wrap it with some sort of wrapper, and then 
eat it within a couple of days. But if you're planning to store it a bit longer, then slice it up in the portions that you would normally want to consume. I normally just slice them up and put them in a freeze-proof container or a freeze bag and then put them in the freezer. Not the fridge, freezer. Because fridge is going to change the texture of the bread. So it's, it's not good for the bread. Put them in a freezer. And when you're ready to eat the bread, just take the portions, the slices out um, you need for that time. You can leave them to defrost to room temperature and just eat it normally. Or you can just pop the frozen slices straight into a toaster. It works quite well. They come out golden brown and crusty. And it's a great idea to freeze it because you have no rush to have to consume it within a certain time limit. If you keep it properly in the freezer, I say it will last up to you know a month, no problem. It's really convenient. So I hope you like today's recipe and will give it a go. I know this is a challenging time and for many of us, the future is uncertain. I mean, I personally only been out twice in the past seven days just to make some essential shoppings. This is an extraordinary time in history of humankind. And this is a time to be fully conscious and not wishing the time away. The valuable lessons we need to learn from all this. But I firmly believe that we can get through it and come out stronger as a human race. I have total faith in that and I hope you do too. So even if you have to be confined in a house for a while, stay happy, stay present and stay safe. And you can eat this bread. So thank you for hanging out with me today and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.